Hi, welcome to the next video. In this one, we are going to build a mini project using React JS. So before we start writing the code, let us take a quick look at the output that we are aiming to build and then also discuss the technologies that we'll be using to develop this project. Okay, so this is the output that we're aiming to build. This, as you can see, is a restaurant menu application and we have some filters in the left panel, if you can see. So on the right hand side, or about 70% of the page consists of all of these dish details. We have about nine dishes that belong to different categories, such as all dishes, breakfast, dinner, shakes, and lunch. As in when we click on these buttons, you will notice that the dishes are filtered based on the category that is assigned to the dish. So this is what we're aiming to create. The all button shows you all the dishes. This is the default selection. And then when we start clicking on these other buttons, the dishes start filtering down to only dishes belonging to that category. In addition to the front end, you will see there is one more tab open here. This contains the data that we're going to use. And we are setting this API endpoint up by using another NPM package called JSON server. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. But what this package does basically is that it gives us an API endpoint, a local host API endpoint where we can host our JSON data. So at the end of the day for a React application, the data is coming from an external source, which is a valid API. Also, I have all the images already downloaded and I have also written the basic CSS code that we need to style this. So we'll focus on the major parts, which is React and the backend connectivity and not so much on the UI aspects of this, which is the CSS part that is already written. You can access the CSS code and the final project also from the repository link, which is mentioned in the description box. So this is what we're trying to build. All right. Now that we've taken a look at the output that we're aiming to build, let's quickly discuss the technologies that we need to build this application. First up, we have React.js. This is what we'll use to build the entire front end. So all the UI, all the front end logic, all the front end functionality, all of that will be handled by React. And then for the backend, we're going to use a very handy NPM package known as JSON server. This package allows us to run a dummy or a mock JSON server from within our system. And it behaves exactly like the data is coming from a proper API. This works with a localhost URL. So for a React application, the data is in fact coming from an external source. Now, the way we are going to approach this project is by building a brand new React application from scratch. So I'll tell you how to set up a React application. We'll build that out. Then I'll tell you how to install and work with JSON server, how to get the server running. And finally, we will work with React hooks like use effect to connect to the API, get the data from there and then use the use state hook to store that data within the state and add the logic. So let's jump in and start working on the code. Okay, so I have VS code open right here. Let's go ahead and start working on the application. The very first thing that we have to do is to create a new react application for which I'm going to go ahead and open a new folder within VS code. So let's go to file, click on open folder. This pulls up our file explorer. You can use an existing folder if you want, but I'll create a new folder. I'll call this menu project, for example. So this is the name of my folder and then click on the open button. This should pull up the folder in React and the advantage of opening a folder in VS Code is the fact that we can get access to all the standard folder tasks such as creating new files and folders from within VS Code. We can also move things around and delete things if we don't need them. So we don't have to go back and forth between the file explorer and React. Perfect. Now that the folder is open, let's set up a React application. For this, we are going to need a terminal. And the command that we have is npx create react app and then the name of the application so i'm going to call it front end the reason i'm calling it front end is because we'll have another folder called back end which will contain the data or the json server logic but in this one we're going to work with the ui so let's call it front end typically when we create a production level application you will have different folders like front end back end and if you have some database logic separately you can have another folder called database as well we don't typically put all the code in a single folder. Another thing that you need to know is to run this npx command, you need to have node.js installed on your system. If you don't have node installed, you can install it from node.js.org 
I'll mention the link in the description box. Perfect. This will take a minute to set up our application. And as soon as that is done, it gives us a success message and two commands to initiate or run this application. So let's go to the front end folder. That's CD front end and then npm start to trigger this application. Now I already have the project running if you can see so that we can compare it with the final output. That is where two ports are already occupied. So 3000 and 3001, these two ports are already occupied, which is why we are getting this notification or an alert. Would you like to open it on another port? Yes, so just click on Y and this will go ahead and open it up in another port. You can see since 3000 and 3001 are occupied, this now opens it up in 3002. This is the code that we get from the default React application. Let's go ahead and quickly delete everything that we don't need from here. The very first thing that we don't need is this readme file. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. It typically just contains some documentation, links, etc., which we don't really need. Then we can delete the git ignore file. I'm not going to work with git on this application, so we can delete that. Next up, let's go to the public folder. From here, we'll delete everything except for the index.html. That's the only file that we need for a working React application. So let's delete everything else. Similarly, from the source, we'll delete everything except for the index.js file. That's the only thing that we need for a valid React project. Done. Now we have our package.json. This keeps a track of all the project dependencies and the project commands. So we have these dependencies which are installed by react by default and it is mandatory that we must have a package.json without which we cannot have a valid react project package log.json is generated from package.json automatically and it is also maintained by the system automatically so we don't have to worry about it then we have the node modules folder which contains the code for all of these packages again it's automatically updated and we don't have to worry about it Finally, we have the index.html. This is the only HTML file in the entire project. And that is why a React application is known as a single page application. Because technically speaking, we only have a single HTML page, which is index.html in the entire application. So this is why we call it an SPA or a single page application. Now, how this works is React takes control of this root div. And then whatever we want to show is put in the same HTML file or rendered in the same HTML file by React. So that's the only HTML file we need. And then we have our index.js. This is where the React code will be written. So I'm going to delete everything that we don't need at this point. And let's just put a simple hello on the screen for now. right? And then we also don't need these other things. Let's remove everything that is not needed. Perfect. And that brings us down to a very simple structure. So we have package.json, index.html and index.js. These are the three files that we will be working with. Everything else will be handled by the system. So package log.json and node modules will automatically be taken care of by node. Done. Now, what do we need for our application? Let's quickly check. If we take a look at the output now, we can see hello. So this means our deletion has not resulted in any problems. So that's great. Next up, we can see the output here. So this contains two major components. We can create one component for a dish, an individual dish, and then another component for the entire page. So let's go ahead and do this. To create components, what we typically do is we create another folder. So let's call it components. And then we create all our custom components within this folder to maintain consistency and keep things neat and clean. The first component that we will create is called dish.js and then the second component that we will create will be menu.js. So we are assuming that menu is the outer wrapper, the overall container and dish is the component for each individual dish. Since we are using React, we don't have to copy paste a lot of code. We can create one component and then use props to pass data onto the other components when we call them. Right? So we can create one dish and then reuse the same component nine times in this case or for as many dishes as we might have. Now let's go ahead and quickly set these components up. So what I typically like to do is I create empty or blank components to begin with and then I go ahead and add the rest of the code. So the first thing that we need here is the import react line. So this is that and then I have ffc that's the function component. Let's create dish 
and then we can just return an h1 for now let's call it dish so if you're wondering how i wrote those shortcuts or how things happen so quickly that's because of an extension called react snippets and so i have it installed already let me quickly show it to you it's called simple react snippets there you go this is the one so you can just install this and this extension gives us a bunch of different shortcuts so again let me show you i just type imr this gives me the import react line and then ffc for the function component syntax so this is called menu let's create h1 let's call it menu done now in the index.js all we have to do is call the menu component because menu will in turn contain the dish so we can just import it like so and then write that in if we check the output as of this point we should just get a hello or a h1 from the menu which is what we do now let's also try to quickly write a dish inside the menu so let's replace this with a div instead and try to call the dish component over here this should show us dish on the screen perfect we can also call this multiple times and pass in different props which is exactly what we're going to do but as you can see our basic structure is set up over here we have the dish component and the menu now let us go ahead and create the dish first and then we'll work on the menu as well so this will be inside a div right and let's take a look at what all do we have for a dish so we have the image up top followed by the name of the dish then there's a price there's an hr and there's a description of the dish which can be a simple paragraph so let's set that up so the first thing is an image for this we'll of course need the source then we have an h2 let's put it so this can be the title of the dish so title of the dish again i'm just hard coding things for now but we will then go ahead and use props in just a minute then we have the price this is then followed by an hr so that's the horizontal rule and finally we have a paragraph which is the description of the dish perfect now let's quickly set this up with props there are two ways to use props we can just specify props like so and then replace these values by props dot let's say image source or image url right? whatever will be available in the data we can put that in so similarly we can put props dot title like so if we need to or what we could do is we can destructure these values up top so like this image url title price and then the description and then we can just use those values without repeating props so many times so we can say title price and then description i personally prefer the destructuring approach as long as the number of props are less than five or seven right so if the number of props are limited we can use this but if you have a lot of data then you might go with the other approach where you just say props up top and then go for props dot in all other places so this is done now whatever details we pass in in a dish that should reflect and we can call multiple dishes like that great next up let's quickly set the menu so for the menu what we need here is very simple first up this will be the outermost container then we'll have two different panels so the first div will contain all our buttons so let's just see what all buttons do we have all breakfast dinner shakes and lunch so let's just create those now let's copy paste this for all the other options as well so we have breakfast dinner shakes and lunch so this is breakfast then we have dinner then shakes and then lunch so these are all the buttons that we have again we'll work on the functionality in just a minute let's set everything else up first then on the right hand side we are going to call the dish component now this will be inside a loop or a map function so that we show all the dishes coming from the data right but our output should look very similar you can see we have the buttons now and then we have all the dishes section as well right now what i'm going to do next is to quickly get the images as well and the data as well then i'll show you how to set up the data part and then we'll work on the logic all right so like i said i've just added all the relevant things so in the public folder i have just made another folder called assets where i have added all the images you can see they are named after the dishes we have nine images in total then i have also created a backend folder where i have the json file so i have not added any logic for the json server we will do that but i've just added the data for now and finally i have also added all the css so i've made a file called index.css it contains all the styling and then we can go ahead and import it so let's import this so that's import.index.css again.slash to refer to the current folder 
and then index.css is the name of the file. As soon as we do this, we should see that the buttons are now styled properly and the dishes will also be styled once we provide all the data. Right now, there is no data for them to work with. Great. So this basic setup is now done. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at our backend first so that the data comes in and then we'll write the logic. So I'm going to open another terminal here. Now for this, it is very important that we have two terminals running side by side or two terminals running parallelly. One terminal will run the server or the backend and then the second terminal will run our frontend. We already have one terminal running the frontend. I'm going to set up the backend now. Now, how do we set this up? It's very simple. Just like we install all other NPM extensions or packages, we are going to install this package called JSON-Server or JSON-Server. This is going to install the package for us. As soon as this package is installed, it gives us access to a command called JSON-Server. And here we have to specify the name of the file. The name of the file has to be db.json. If you don't give a file with that name, it will create a file with some dummy data. But I already have it. But again, we are not in the correct folder. I've just realized we are in the menu project wherein we have to be in the backend folder. So let's first switch to backend. We'll have to install this again. And then we can run the command. That's JSON server. So JSON hyphen server db dot JSON. This should trigger the server for us. And as you can see, it says address already in use because I have it running from another application. Let me go ahead and close that so that this can run. Okay, so I've made the port available now. Let's try running the command again. I'm going to close the terminal and open it again just to be sure. And then first we have to switch to the backend folder. The command is then json-server db.json. This should trigger it now for us. You can see it works fine. And it also gives us the resource URL as you can see. If we go to this URL, that's localhost 3000 slash all dishes, it gives us all our data. Perfect. This is exactly what we were looking at. So if I just zoom in here, you can see every dish has title, category, price, image and description. So these are the keywords or these are the key value pairs available in the database. Right. So this is our data. Next up, let's go ahead and connect to this data or fetch this data from React. To do this, we need two hooks. The first hook is use effect, which will connect to the API. And then we need the use state hook, which will help us store the data locally so that we can work on the filter logic. So let's head over to our components and work with this. At this point, we'll realize that we also need an additional package, which is the Axios package to run this API call or to actually, you know, initiate the API call. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and run npm i Axios. This should install the Axios package for us. And now we should be able to use it. Let's start the application as well. Yes, we can run it on another port. And I think it's zoomed in. So no worries. I can just zoom out because I just zoomed in to show you the data. So that's the problem. But yes, we're zoomed out now and this is sorted. Now let's work on the logic. So first up, we need to import Axios. So let's do that. From Axios, so that's what we need. And I think we don't need these single quotes. So that's not needed. Done. Then we need the use state and use effect. Both of the hooks will come from React. So we can import use effect, comma, use state. So we have added all the necessary imports. Then we write the use effect logic within the function component before the return. So over here, what we can do is we can say use effect. And the way the use effect hook works is it will be called whenever the component is rendered for the very first time. So whenever the component renders on the screen, only then this particular hook will execute once. And that is when we want to fetch the data. Now the syntax is also really important, right? So we'll write the callback like this, and then we have to put a square bracket. This is where we can specify what is known as a dependency list. So if there is anything in our component based on which or based on whose value change we want to fetch the data again, we can mention that. But in our case, we don't really have anything like that. So we can say axios.get because we don't want to send anything. We just want to get all the data. So we'll use the get HTTP method. Then we need a localhost URL. Let me get that from the browser. So that's localhost 3000. Once we have the data, what do we want to do? Well, dot then we want to take the response. 
so R E S, and then for now let's just say we want to print it out. So we can say console dot log response dot data. Let's see what we get. So we just have to print the response out for now. Of course we'll create a state to store this as well. But for now let's see if we get this in the console or not. So let's head back to our application. Here we go. I'll right click inspect. Let's go to the console and you can see we have our data available in this array. So it means our data is available. Don't worry about the warnings that we're seeing here. This will be fixed as soon as we create all the other logic, right? So we have the data with us, which is what we were aiming for. So that's great. Now our use effect part is done. We are able to fetch the data from our backend. Now let's work with the state logic. So for this, we need to create state variables first, which is using use state. And then we can set that value from here. So we typically create state variables up top before any other function logic. So that will be right here. What do we need? Well, we need all dishes and then a method for that. So set all dishes equal to use state. And this is an empty array for now. Then we need one more state variable to maintain the current category. So let's call it category and then set category. This is what we need to apply our filter. So use state. And the default category has to be all. Right? So that's the default category and that's the value that I have set. Whenever we click on any of these buttons, the category must be modified to that category based on which button is clicked. Then we want to work on this part where we have to now set all dishes. So instead of printing them in the console, we can say set all dishes. So this way the all dishes value will get updated. Finally, instead of calling this individual dish, what we will do is we'll call the entire thing right, using an array. So we can say all dishes dot map. And then we can use this map function to go ahead and call all the dishes. This will actually go in curly brackets and then the dish will go inside. Right? So we have to be very careful with this syntax. Everything that we want to do within the map function is going to be within the round brackets. We don't have to write anything outside of the round bracket. Perfect. So this should return the dishes nine times for us, right? So we've written the map function. This should take care of the dish for us. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and pass in all the props. So what all props do we need? Well, we need these things. So let me copy them from here and I'm going to paste them over there. We can pass these in one by one. And this will be the HTML attribute style syntax, which we use to pass in props. So these are the four values that we need. And where are these values coming from? Well, they will come from each individual dish. So let me replace with the actual value that will be dish dot. Let's check our data. So we have something called IMG. Right? This is the value. So dish dot IMG. Then we have title, category, price and DESC. So they are the same spelling. So this will be title. So that dish dot title. Then we have the price. So that's dish dot price. And finally, we have the description. So that's dish dot DESC for description. Perfect. This is everything that we need to pass in. And now let's check our output. So this should call all the dishes for us. And you can see we don't really see anything on the screen. And that's probably because our return is missing. So we actually have to put in return. So let's go ahead and put that in. And that should then fix it. So if I just go back to the output now, you can see all the dishes are now showing up. I think the styling is a little off. Now I think let's quickly check the style as well. I think I forgot to put the class for the image. Yes. So that dish image class is missing. And I think this was dish data and not details. And there you go. As soon as I change those classes, our styling is now fixed. And again, the buttons are also looking good. Finally, what we have to do is to add the actual functionality to click on these buttons, right? For this, we are going to use that state which we have created, which is the category state, this one. So whenever a button is clicked, what we want to do is we want to write a method to change that state. So we can say filter category. We can create a function by this name. So we can say const filter category. This can be an arrow function. And what this will do is it will read in the category that we provide. And it will simply set the category to that category. That's it. So this is the logic for our filter. Then whenever a button is clicked, we want to call it. So we can say button on click, then call this. And then based on the button that we are clicking on, we can pass in the category value as a 
parameter or an argument right so i'm just going to copy paste this and simply replace these with the corresponding names now remember it is very important to use lower cases here because the actual data if you see contains all the categories in lower case so that is very important we have to use lower cases because if you use capital casing then it will not match the actual category and it might be a problem another thing that we must do here is also pass a key prop so key can be the dish id we have it available in the data as well see each dish has an id and that's it this should complete our entire logic let's double check so i'm going to breakfast and dinner and nothing happens here let's try clicking these buttons so nothing is happening and that is because we have not written the display logic over here right now what we're doing is we are printing all the dishes out and this is not changing based on the button click so over here we need to add a little more logic for this to work right so let's add our missing logic the first thing that we want to do is to make sure that this loads only when some dishes are available so for this we can put a condition like so all dishes and so this would make sure that only when all dishes contains some value then it will load up otherwise it will not show anything then we have to remove this return bit from here and instead of that we are going to write our custom condition right so the condition is going to be that the category should either be all which is the default case or the category should be equal to the dish dot category right so that's dish dot category the dish is each individual dish that we're talking about and then we can put the rest of it also in a round bracket so this way what we're trying to do is we're trying to check first of all are there any dishes available if yes go ahead and map through each dish for each dish check whether the category is either all or it belongs to individual dish category and only then print it out and finally the last thing that we have to do is to remove these curly brackets and that should be it yes there you go all the errors are now gone and now let's go ahead and check the output so this time around you can see the dishes are visible and now when i click on the filters the filters are also working as expected right so this is how we can go ahead and implement the entire on click functionality let me give you a quick tour of what we have done so far so the first step that we have done is to create the front end folder within this front end folder we then deleted all the default files which we did not need and then we created two custom components that's dish.js and menu.js then i've also added the css file where you can see we have all the styling code or the css code then the menu contains all our logic and the dish simply is a display only component which just takes the props that it gets from the menu component and prints the dishes out on the screen it's actually pretty simple the menu contains two state variables or two state values that's category and all dishes we are using the use effect hook to connect to the api endpoint and get the dish data from there once we get that data we are saying set all dishes to that data so all dishes will get updated as soon as the call is done as soon as the api call is done then whenever a button is clicked we are updating the category using the filter category method which is simply setting the category to the category coming from the button so based on what button is clicked we are passing the corresponding parameters as the category Finally, we have written the display logic. This is where most people get confused. Right? So this logic is actually a little tricky. Let me quickly walk you through this one more time. First up, what we're doing is we are saying all dishes and. This will check whether there is any value available within all dishes. So if the all dishes array will be empty, then this will not work because the left side of the first condition will fail. So none of this will show up. As long as there are dishes available, then we are going to go ahead and map to them so in the mapping what we're doing is for each dish first we are checking whether the category is all or the current category that has been selected is equal to dish dot category as long as these two things are true or one of these is true then we are going to go ahead and print it out so again it's the same condition as above we are first checking if one of these category values are true and only then we are going to print the dish out if for instance we have a dish which belongs to none of the categories for example let us say that we have all dishes where we have everything but there could be some dishes for example which do not have the breakfast category so once we click on the breakfast button all those other dishes are filtered out using this part right their category will not be equal to the selected category and that way the dish will not be printed out 
right so this is the logic that we have written and there you go this is our complete react application now so we have all breakfast dinner shakes and lunch you can access the entire source code the starter code as well as the final code for this project from the repository link that is given in the description box so there we go this is how we can put together react along with the json server package to create a restaurant menu filter project if you found this video useful do like the video and let me know in the comments what project you want me to build next also subscribe to the channel for more content on programming and web development thank you so much for stopping by i'll see you in the next one